Have you been struggling with low back pain? If so, then you might be experiencing facet joint syndrome. This is a problem that can seem to start out of nothing. Uh, there's been no trauma, no triple fall, no injury. All you did was bend down to pick something up or turn to talk to a friend or maybe you even coughed or sneezed and wham! Pain in your back that just will not go away. Today we're going to talk about what is a facet joint, what do they do, what would be a sign that there's a problem, are x-rays and MRIs useful, and what are the treatment options. So uh, let's get to it, Sean. Okay, let's go. Now facet joint syndrome is a condition that affects the facet joints or facet joints in our spine, causing pain and discomfort. These joints, also known as zygopophyseal joints, Say what? Yeah, I know, a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Zygopophyseal joints, but we'll stick to calling them facet joints or facet joints. It's easier for everyone. The facet joints are where the vertebrae in our spine connect and allow for movement and flexibility. Due to the vertical positioning of the joint surfaces, the low back is best suited to flexion and extension movements. A person with facet joint syndrome will often say their movement is limited. Perhaps they struggle to get out of a chair, have difficulty getting their socks or shoes on, are painful when rolling over in bed at night. They might feel better laying on their back with their knees bent, with their feet flat on the floor like this, or find walking easier when leaning forwards over a shopping trolley. It can differ for everyone, of course, because as you may well have noticed, everyone is different. Usually the pain is quite localised, but can also refer across the back at times and have a dull ache down the leg or legs as far as the knee. The explanation why facet joint syndrome happens will differ depending on the health profession that you're speaking to. The explanation I most commonly come across is that facet joint syndrome occurs when the facet joints become inflamed or irritated, uh, usually due to ageing or wear and tear, degeneration as it's known, uh, or injury. And certainly that can happen, I'm not doubting that, but what about when it happens in a person in their 30s after picking up a pen off the floor? Uh, now this is how I break this down in my mind. Our 30 year old is very unlikely to have excessive degenerative changes in their low back at this point in their life. There was no trauma because they only picked up a pen, therefore unlikely that it would have caused any muscle strain or ligament sprain, meaning that there's also going to be no inflammation present. So why does a person like this get facet joint pain? Well, to understand this, we have to go deeper into understanding how the body works. Does that sound good? Do it! Just do it! Okay, well, <laughs> I promise not to go too technical on you. I'll give you a brief summary now, but we give a full explanation in the video linked in the top corner of the screen right now, uh, and go there if you want to know a bit more. But our body's made up of thousands of moving parts, just like a car. Now we get our car serviced in order to keep it working and reduce the risk of getting us stuck at the side of the road, don't we? Well, our body is no different. Our joints, muscles and tendons also need to be checked up now and again to keep them working optimally. If not, then we can get stuck in our chair, have difficulty putting our socks on, or find it difficult or painful to roll over in bed at night. Having interacted with a lot of people with facet syndrome, both in person and in different social media groups, a lot of people believe that they need an X-ray or MRI so that they know what's going on. Unfortunately, in most cases, medical imaging is pretty unhelpful, and, and this is why. Research shows that degenerative changes are very common in people of all ages, whether they've got back pain or not. 10% of people already have signs of degeneration in their low back by their 30s, so our X-ray or MRI findings uh, of facet joint degeneration, disc bulges or disc dehydration, need to be taken with a healthy pinch of salt and is certainly not a diagnosis. Uh, there's a link in the corner here where we explain the findings of an MRI report, so you might find that useful. A diagnosis has to take into account the clinical history, physical examination and the imaging findings all together. Too often people think the MRI or X-ray tells them all they need to know. In truth, they couldn't be more wrong. Before we start pushing for an X-ray or MRI, Why are you pushing me? We should go and see a clinician who sees these types of cases all the time, like an osteopath, chiropractor, or other types of physical therapists. But 
Now we're gonna go on to treatment options and I've given you a little hint from where we should ideally start looking. I'm a believer that we should always start with non-invasive options, treatment options, and then move towards invasive treatment options only when necessary. First up, we'll have our osteopaths, chiropractors, and other physiotherapists. They should ideally take a thorough history and full physical examination before using a variety of different hands-on techniques to improve joint function. We need to know what the problem is before we start to try and solve it. I personally use for treatment spinal manipulation and or spinal mobilization, depending on the case in front of me. Again, differs from person to person. And I'll use some massage techniques to ease muscle spasm as well. It shouldn't be too rough and rugged, so please don't be fooled into thinking that all chiropractors or osteopaths are like the ones you see on YouTube all the time. Trust me, we're all different. You might need to take some medication in the early days, of course, to help improve mobility. However, this can sometimes allow you to do a little bit more than perhaps we should and can have a negative effect once the dose has worn off. And remember, don't be surprised if the anti-inflammatory medication doesn't work because if there's no trauma, there's unlikely to be any tissue damage. Therefore, there's unlikely to be any inflammation. So keep alert to how your body is reacting to the medication. If, on the other hand, anti-inflammatory medication does help, then you could double up on the anti-inflammatory effect by applying a cold compress to your low back. The first invasive therapy could be a local anaesthetic injection into the facet joint in order to test whether it actually relieves your pain. If it does, then that's probably the cause of the problem. This could be followed up with a form of corticosteroid injection if appropriate. Radiofrequency ablation is an invasive treatment strategy that is gaining a lot of popularity at the moment. But as this research article mentions, only after physical treatments have failed, so it shouldn't be your first port of call, certainly. Research shows that it can be beneficial in about 50% of carefully selected clients, and I've certainly had first-hand reports of it improving pain levels and working well. It is a procedure that needs to be repeated after about 10 months, it seems, according to research. Uh, but we'll do a separate video going into more depth on radiofrequency ablation. Our last option is surgery. It's extremely rare to have surgery for this condition. Uh, removing or replacing facet joints is very, very new. Therefore, we have very little long-term data to know the success levels of it. But weigh up all the evidence and make a decision that you feel works for you. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.